Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about focused ultrasound as a treatment for essential tremors and Parkinson's. I hope to go through uh, in enough detail that I can answer many of your questions. So my name is Aaron Bond. I'm a uh, functional neurosurgeon here at Sam's Murphy and assistant professor at the University of Tennessee, as well as the medical director of the Regional One Incisionless Surgery Center uh, here in Memphis. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, essential tremor, the facts, the impact on patients, the treatment options. We'll talk about focused ultrasound and uh, how it works. I'll try and cover who's a suitable patient for um, obtaining this procedure, what it's like on the treatment day, what to expect, what the results are, as well as some of the three-year uh, clinical results. Briefly, if you're on this uh, webinar, you probably have a good idea about essential tremor. Uh, it's fairly debilitating, generally progresses over time. It's often considered uh, idiopathic or benign, meaning we don't have a known cause for it. It's uh, often is hereditary. It's very common to have families where the mother or father or uncle or brother uh, also has essential tremors. And this can be, uh, as I mentioned, very debilitating to the point where people have trouble with basic activities of daily living, such as eating, drinking, and getting ready in the morning. This is just an example of a typical essential tremor patient. Let's just watch this video. I've always had essential tremors since I was a child. In a work setting, I need to write, I need to be able to uh, sign contracts, I check into hotels, and uh, the, the shakes hurt. I mean, it makes it very difficult for me to, uh, to get through those parts of, of life. Essential tremor affects approximately 10 million Americans. Many uh, patients with tremors are undiagnosed. They just sit at home and just think that this is just part of the aging process. There are medications that you can use for essential tremors. When the medications have significant side effects or they fail to relieve your symptoms, then that's when it comes time to do a procedure. Some of the different medications that people uh, can typically try are beta blockers, such as propranolol or otherwise known as Enderol, anti-seizure medications such as primidone or gabapentin are very common, as well as some anti-anxiety med medications or benzodiazepines, such as clonazepam. These are common uh, medications that are tried. As I mentioned, when these fail to uh, work, there are surgical interventions that can be considered. Deep brain stimulation is one of them. That's where we place electrodes in the brain, right where the tremor circuitry is. And then you wear a pacemaker-like device under the skin. Focused ultrasound, which is what we're gonna talk about in detail today. Uh, and RF thalamotomy, which is where we use a, a probe. We stick that in the brain and do localized heating. And then, of course, stereotactic radio surgery, which uses radiation. There's also some newer devices out there, such as the Calatrio device, which is a peripheral nerve stimulator, which does give some temporary effect. On the right here, these are uh, what are called Archimedes spirals. In the uh, upper right, this is a typical patient before treatment with the focused ultrasound system. And immediately after the treatment, you can see the improvement in their tremors. So with this treatment, there's no delayed waiting for the improvement. It literally is immediately after and you go home with your tremors gone. The way it works is we have 
uh, a helmet shaped device that has transducers. It emits sound waves, high frequency, high intensity sound waves, which travel through the skull. They focus down to a really small spot and they create a lesion in the brain or a localized heating in the area where that tremor circuitry is. And it disrupts that uh, circuitry that's causing the tremor. This is the same target that's used for deep brain stimulation and the same target that's used for RF thalamotomy. It's just going about it in an incisionless um, uh, way of creating the lesion. On the day of the procedure, the first thing that happens is you come in, put in an IV, give you some medications, and then uh, we start prepping the head. We do unfortunately have to shave your entire head because the hair can get in the, can interfere with the uh, uh, ultrasound. After we shave your head, we place a head frame on which secures your head within the system. Then we perform an MRI scan and we do some planning. The planning is uh, used to identify where we want to focus that energy to create the lesion. And then during the procedure, we do some smaller doses of energy to do some alignment. And then once we have that all aligned properly, then we increase the energy and we create the, uh, the treatment level sonication or delivery of the ultrasound and create the lesion. And that's when we get the improvements in the hand tremor. Here's a little cartoon which uh, shows the machine and the basic uh, process of uh, going through this. You start out uh, in the prep room where we shave your head, and then we place the head frame on top of your head. This is typically done in the, in the prep room, not on the MRI table. And then we lay you down on the MRI table and put the transducer over your head. And then we have you go inside the machine and we do an MRI scan and we do a bunch of planning. It probably takes about 30 minutes just getting all the planning done. Once the planning is done, we do some low power sonications. Again, a sonication is when we deliver ultrasonic energy. These low power sonications are simply to make sure the alignment of everything is correct and that we're happy before we go to the next step, which is when we're going to increase that power and do uh, high power sonications to create lesions. As we're doing those higher power sonications, you come out of the machine, we test your tremors, we ask you if you're having any side effects, and we can make little adjustments to our targeting based on the feedback that you give us. All in all, from start to finish of starting to prep your head to being completely done with the procedure, it typically takes about two and a half hours. You're on the, the table, the MRI table, and the, uh, getting the ultrasound, that whole process probably takes about two hours. So the prep is about 30 minutes. Not everybody is a, a perfect candidate for the focused ultrasound, but most people are. Um, in general, first you have to be diagnosed with either essential tremor or tremor predominant Parkinson's disease. You have to be 22 years or older for essential tremor and greater than 30 years for tremor predominant Parkinson's. Many people ask me how old is too old? Well, we did a 95 year old yesterday and, uh, or, or not yesterday, it was uh, on Friday and uh, we were able to get rid of her tremor. So um, there is really technically no upper limit. You do have to be able to tolerate the procedure with or without some form of sedation. I typically don't use any sedation. Um, you have to be able to communicate with me to let me know if you're having any numbness or tingling or altered sensation. And you do get a little button that allows you to stop the procedure at any point uh, in case there's something wrong. So you need to be able to operate that button. You need to be able to fit in the MRI scanner. There is a weight limit of just under 300 pounds. If you can't get an MRI, for example, you have a non-MRI compatible pacemaker, then that would be a problem because this whole procedure is done within an MRI scanner. So that would be a contraindications. 
There's something called the skull density ratio that we calculate, which is, uh, has to do with the characteristics of your skull. Let's us know if we can or cannot effectively deliver that energy. And um, about 80% of patients that are screened for this procedure pass without a problem, but unfortunately about one out of every five do have a skull density ratio that doesn't, uh, isn't compatible with the procedure. In terms of benefits, the really nice thing about this is it's an immediate uh, effect. So you come in eight o'clock in the morning, you go home at 1030 and your tremors are gone. It's a once and done kind of thing. There's no programming, there's no wires. It's a, a fairly durable uh, improvement too. And I have some data here on the three-year results, which I'll talk about. Uh, patients have significant improvements in quality of life after uh, getting rid of their tremors, as you can imagine. Even patients with bilateral tremors, when they can fix one side, at, uh, I've noted with my patients, they've really had an improvement in their quality of life. It goes without saying, there's no implants, so you don't have that risk of infection. There's no anesthesia, so you don't have anesthetic risk. And the complications, although they're not uh, complications and risk, although they're not uh, zero, they're uh, fairly low, which we'll talk about. This is just a, an example of the before and after focused ultrasound treatment and the um, the real impact on this person's ability to just drink from a cup of water, both of these patients. These are the three-year clinical results. Uh, at three-year follow-up, 76.5% uh, of the patients had uh, significant tremor improvement and um, very significant um, improvements in quality of life from before when they had the procedure. There's psychosocial benefits, so the ability to go out to eat. Uh, a lot of patients can return to work and return to their hobbies and their leisure activities. Initially after treatment, uh, the most common side effects are some imbalance issues, some numbness or tingling in the hand or the uh, lips on the side that they treated. And uh, some patients complain of some headaches. Most of that gets better uh, over time. However, there is a small percentage of patients who may have some persistent numbness or uh, unsteadiness uh, after uh, the three years time frame. From my experience, if you have numbness after the procedure, typically takes about a month to two months for that to get better. There's uh, quite a few focused ultrasound centers in the country. There's more coming online all the time. The ones in blue here are the ones that are uh, new. I'm right here in Memphis, uh, and uh, there's really no other centers um, in any uh, uh, close proximity for Western Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. So we, we get patients from all over the country uh, we've had some come in from California, actually, as well as uh, Florida. So um, we've we've really kind of optimized uh, Zoom interfaces. If this is something that uh, you think you might be interested in, it's very common for us to have our first con conversations just over Zoom. So you don't actually have to come all the way to the clinic to see if you might be a candidate. This procedure is covered by Medicare under the Part B. Uh, benefits. Um, Medicare will cover both uh, this procedure for tremor predominant Parkinson's as well as for essential tremor. Uh, Aetna and Blue Cross have coverage for essential tremor. Uh, and in some rare cases, we have had some cash paying patients um, and that price is set by regional one. So if you were fell into that category, we could hook you up with the correct people. So that's the bulk of what I have to say about the focused ultrasound procedure. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. 
that you may have. First question here is if you have tremor in both hands, will this treatment only affect one hand or arm? The, the answer to that is yes. Um, the, uh, the focus ultrasound treatment creates a little lesion on one side of the brain. So if you're right-handed, we would make the lesion on the left side of the brain. And it's only gonna affect that hand. Um, unfortunately, at this time, we do not have FDA approval to do a bilateral procedure. There is some research going on uh, into that, but we have no idea uh, what the results of that are going to be. So it is a unilateral procedure at this time. There's another question here about someone who has claustrophobia. They're wondering about being sedated and can you still do this? That's a good question. The problem is most of the medications we would give someone will also stop their tremors. So you really have to be awake and alert for this procedure uh, to be able to have it done because we need direct feedback of whether or not we've controlled your tremor. Uh, so in general, we don't uh, give patients sedation. And if you have severe claustrophobia, it, it might not be a good procedure for you. But if you've been able to get through an MRI, then you would probably be able to get through this procedure. That would be a good test. There's another question here about, do I have to have a CT scan before I come? Uh, if we talk on the phone or if you come to see me to discuss it, then we can jointly decide if this is the right procedure for you. And then we can order that CT scan and do the calculations to see if you indeed are a candidate if your skull density ratio is within the limits. And then uh, if you're a candidate, then we would schedule the procedure. So the typical workflow is I either see you in clinic or talk to you on Zoom, and then we order the CT scan as kind of the last check to see if you're a good candidate, and then we schedule the procedure. So another question, if I'm a songwriter. Does this process ever affect creativity? I have not had that feedback um, as it affecting someone's creativity. So from my experience, and we've done almost 90 of these uh, in Memphis now, that has not been an issue. There's so another question here that I have had a CT, which I was told gave a measurement of 0 0.43 and my office told uh, you that you weren't a candidate. So here's the problem. So the FDA approval is 0 0.45 plus or minus 0 0.05. The Medicare approval doesn't have the plus or minus 0 0.05. So if you have Medicare, your skull density ratio needs to be greater than or equal to 0 0.45, even though the FDA has approved it for greater than or equal to 0 0.40. So that's where that discrepancy comes from. And we've tried to fight with Medicare on this and we've uh, unfortunately come up short. So another question that says, what if your bone density is too high? The skull density ratio is a little more complicated than that. You can actually have very good bone density and still be a candidate. Uh, the skull density ratio has more to do with the different layers in our skull between the cortical bone and cancellous bone and if there's too much reflection there. So if you've been told you have hard bones, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not a candidate. Question of what's the next step? Next step is to put in an inquiry uh, either through the website or directly to uh, Regional One or Sam Murphy, and we can set up a time to do a Zoom or have a clinic visit. Another question about can FUS be done on a patient who has DBS implanted on the other side or vice versa? Um, not typically. I, I usually goes the other way around. There have been patients who've had focused ultrasound and then have had DBS implanted. Um, but to my knowledge, um, people have not done it the other way around where they did DBS and then focused ultrasound. 
Uh, one person's asking what's the normal lead time to schedule. We usually can get you in to have your first consultation within a couple of weeks. And then uh, we can schedule the procedure uh, typically within a month or two. Another question regarding the uh, patient who tried Calatrio and it didn't help. Does that uh, correlate to whether or not this treatment would help? I don't think so. I think uh, if the Calatrio didn't work, uh, you still would likely be a good candidate for the focused ultrasound. Uh, another person asked about repeating the code for asking for insurance approval. So that code is uh, 0398T as in Tom. There's a question about whether FUS can help improve your singing voice tremor. Focused ultrasound is indicated for treatment of your upper extremity. Uh, we try not to promise any improvement in head tremors or voice tremors as a result of this procedure because it's unpredictable. That being said, I've had some patients who have had some improvement in head and vocal tremors, but it's very unpredictable, so we can't promise that. Uh, there's a question about how long it should last. Uh, right now, we have data from the randomized trial after three years. Um, so we have good data to three years. We're hoping that that data will uh, last, but um, that's really all we can say about that because that's the data we have. There's a question about if my SDR is less than 0 0.45, but I'd be a cash pay, can I still have the procedure? Yes, you can. Another question about can I uh, discontinue my prescribed medications? So if you have the procedure, the, uh, the procedure will get rid of the tremors in one of your arms, or at least 80% of it uh, reduced. Yeah. But a lot of times patients will still have tremors in the other arm or in the head or the voice. So they'll have to keep taking their medications because of the tremors on the other side. If you had a unilateral tremor and you had the procedure done and the procedure worked for you, then it, uh, there are many patients who are able to taper their medications down. Initially, after the procedure, we ask you to take your medications and then at follow up, we can kind of decide, does it make sense to taper them down? There's a question of can the procedure be done more than once if needed? Uh, in theory, the answer is yes. Uh, getting someone to pay for it is, is really the question there because one contraindication to doing this procedure is having a previous procedure done. Another question, if you have a Zoom consultation, how and where is the skull density uh, measured? Uh, we have had pretty good luck in arranging MRIs close to home and then having you uh, mail that CD with, uh, not MRI, CTs, and having you mail that CT, the CD with the CT on it to us, and then we calculate the skull density ratio and then just let you know. Another person asked if the focus ultrasound doesn't give a good result, can you have deep brain stimulator yet later? Yes, and I've had patients where I've done that for them. Sometimes there's some payment issues related to that, but in general, uh, yes. And uh, I've seen some pretty good results with um, DBS after fuss when people had kind of a recurrence of their tremors. And the last question here is why are there not more throughout the country? It's a relatively new technology and it's fairly expensive. So <laughs> it just takes some time. Uh, it's only got FDA approved in 2016 and Medicare approved in 2017. Um, so I think with time, we're going to see more and more of these. And there's, there's expanding indications as well. Right now, it's approved for central tremor and tremor predominant Parkinson's, as well as unilateral GPI for uh, Parkinson's. Um, that's FDA approval, but we only have uh, Medicare approval for ET and tremor predominant Parkinson's. And as more of those approvals and more of those indications come out, I think we'll see more systems installed. Uh, last question, uh, uh, 
can I have it if I take Eloquist? Um, yeah, I have many patients who take Eloquist. We typically ask you to stop it for uh, three days before and three days after. There's also in the chat box, if you want to request an appointment, uh, we have the link there that you can just click on and um, we can set you up with an appointment to have more one-on-one -on -one discussion. I want to thank you all for taking the time out of your day today to listen to this webinar. This is a recorded webinar and will be posted uh, hopefully in the near future. So if you have uh, uh, other questions, you can look back through this and hopefully they were all answered. Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and end the webinar now.